The 1900 census reported that nearly 2 million children were working, making up 6% of America's labor force. Children as young as five contributed wages to the family income. And many child laborers faced unhealthy or dangerous working conditions that often left them sick, injured, or deformed. Children were working in the fields, um, and I'm talking about black children, white children, immigrant children, were working in cotton fields, in blueberry patches, in canning factories, in coal mines. They were sitting in coal shafts, controlling elevators for 12 hours a day at the age of 10 or 11. Progressive reformers became alarmed at the growing number of child workers. They formed organizations in the early 1900s devoted to the healthy development of children. One of those organizations, the National Child Labor Committee, hired Lewis Wicks Hine to photograph children at work and to expose their harsh conditions. Hines' images brought national attention to the difficult life of millions of children. Over the next 20 years, the NCLC and other organizations investigated child labor abuses and continued to push for state legislation that would take children out of the workforce and put them in schools. Finally, by 1929, every state had restrictions preventing children under 14 from working. But national legislation against child labor would take another decade because business and industry continued to oppose it. In fact, one of the major reasons that national legislation about child labor didn't make it past the Supreme Court until 1938, I mean, it's unbelievable to us that there was no federal legislation against child labor until almost 1940, was because essentially the Southern cotton interests and Midwestern coal, iron, steel interests combined to fight this legislation to stop child labor. In 1938, President Franklin D. Roosevelt signed the Fair Labor Standards Act, which restricted child labor and continues to protect workers to this day.